We're hitting the exhaust, which is a huge bummer. All right, internet, it's time for you and me to have a talk about grounding on these engines. You can see the old tint that came out was very much purple. Seeing a JDM bumper on what is otherwise a USDM front end. <laughs> EG ready to do battle. It is time to finish off the EF with one last glorious build episode before it goes to the racetrack. And as you'll recall from the previous episodes, we do have a whole host of hard race suspension arms to put in there because we didn't have them at the time. They are here now and we thought, you know what? A few other things we wanna do. So let's just up our level here, up our game a little bit and really put that cherry on top of this beautiful EF. As you just saw, we've replaced a bunch of uh, control arms in the front, as we told you we would, starting with the upper control arms from Hard Race, sourced from our friends at stage4motorsports.com. That gives us plenty of camber adjustability, which, we, which we're going to need, because the car is low and, well, we haven't really had a chance to dial in the alignment yet. We also replaced the lower control arm, and we did that primarily for the bushing upgrade. So we now have Hard Race's hardened rubber bushings in place, which will take a lot of uh, unwanted play out of those joints. And as you saw, we also swapped in the bushing at the uh, front of these lower tension rods. Again, a stiffer bushing, just to tighten everything up and give us better you know, camber and uh, toe control. We've done much the same that we did up front. We changed out the lower control arms to these really nice billet ones from Hard Race. Again, with their hardened rubber bushings in all three locations. 
the arm that was there already was actually like a aftermarket replacement arm. So it was basically brand new, but it would have had very soft bushings in it. So this will get rid of a lot of that compliance. Same with the toe arm. You can see we had these like OE style stamp steel ones made in Taiwan. Again, like cheap aftermarket ones. And you can see from its construction, it's going to have some flex in it compared to the much more rugged hard race ones, which give us more adjustability as well and stiffer bushings. Uh, we also have the camber arm in there that we did earlier. And uh, we're going to try to fit up a rear sway bar now, but Pete just noticed we may have a little bit of a problem with that. First of all, big thanks to Icon Era Parts. Dylan had this in his stash and uh, we picked it up off of him. And DP, look how mint this is. This it is, is uh, not a Canadian car. Really not. Looking type of part, especially off of an EF. And here is the issue. So these, you can see these mounts both up here. And if we were to bolt them up, we would have what is on this side, we're fine because we clear the exhaust tips. But here, guess what? We're hitting the exhaust, which is a huge bummer. However, I'm looking at this thinking to myself, if we just build a spacer to bring this down, then we still might be able to do this. We may be able to make this work because we really do want a rear sway bar on this car, especially for any type of like performance or, or track use. This thing is going to plow without it. So we're gonna try everything we can to get this to fit. I think I've got a solution here. However, I should mention that this exhaust system was built prior to having a sway bar. That is why we would have had interference. If we had put the sway bar on, I'm sure um, the Vibrant guys would have built it around, Goki's Garage would have built it around the sway bar. However, look at what I've done. I've taken a solid billet piece of aluminum, cut some holes into it, cut it down, and spaced this uh, sway bar down enough where now it clears the exhaust. You can see it's not gonna hit, which is good, and it is bolted on. So I think this is gonna work. I just have to put this other one in on the other side, but for all intents and purposes, I think we have a sway bar now. Next up here, we are pulling the crank pulley. If you guys remember, um, we ended up putting an N1 crank pulley on here because we did not have the proper size pulley for this engine. And what I did is I ended up ordering one. Please don't drop that key. That's look at this key doesn't want to come out, DP. It's, yeah. Nope, it's staying in the crank. All so right. this is the N1 pulley that we were running for the time being. Some of you complain that this isn't dampened, so that's gonna be a problem, which, you know, I kind of agree. It's very light though, which is good. Um, however, we have AC on this car, and we really want to run that AC because I put a bunch of effort and time into making sure that it's gonna work. So I ordered this off of eBay, which is a B16 uh, crank pulley, so it is the right diameter. And now really the question is, will this fit in here? without us having to drop this engine? And the answer is yeah, oh, 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 yes, DP, yes. <laughs> All right. Except now the key has oh, just there fallen goes. out. There, there it goes. goes, that's okay. As long as it didn't fall inside the engine, DP, we're good. All right. So we're gonna put this on here. The one thing I forgot to do is, guess what, guys? Order belts, because we're gonna need new belts. So I'm gonna place an order, but we are now going to be AC equipped with this car as well. So things are on the up and up here. All right, internet, it's time for you and me to have a talk about grounding on these engines. Uh, as you may recall, we had this ground strap actually on the back corner here to the shock tower, but we originally maybe had it here. In both cases, it was not to one of the studs that holds the valve cover on, which according to you fellas, and perhaps maybe one gal in the world too, it needs to ground through the stud because the stud goes down into the, the cylinder head where this doesn't. However, I will say, I grounded my Type R motor to this spot over here, not on a stud, and it made all the power in the world on the dyno and has run perfectly ever since. So I don't actually know how, how important this is, but if you look in the factory service manual, the correct location is on this stud here. So we're gonna put it on this stud here just to make all you Honda experts out there happy. So you win this one, internet. And because I'm chasing braking perfection, I am gonna install this hard race brake master cylinder uh, stopper, it prevents flex here. So if you're super strong like me and you have a, a left leg like like a tr like the trunk of an elephant and you smash that brake pedal, you can actually get flex here. And uh, that would theoretically reduce braking feel, 
So this will stiffen up this whole assembly here and give me better braking feel. We know you guys like some shiny bling from time to time and we do like these JSP rad uh, brackets and uh, they were kind enough to send us this battery tie down so that we have like the, the matching set. So let's make this end. Oh, look how wimpy the other one is, DP. It's, it's true. like, oh, you just want to. It's wanna... an insult to battery brackets, really. Like, look at the beefiness of this unit right here, everybody. And if oh, there's billet? anything I like, it's a beefy billet unit. Look at that, everybody. Woo! That is a thing of beauty. The engine bay, also a thing of beauty, but that really is the uh, cherry on top. Turns out building two Golden Era Hondas takes longer than we thought. And that means we no longer need these winter tires. These are of course Continental's Viking Contact 7, a very, very good winter tire. We absolutely love them, but conditions have changed. So that means it's now time for summer tires. For that, we are going with Continental's Extreme Contact Sport O2s, the very best summer tire that we've ever used. They are phenomenal in the wet and the dry. They have tons of grip, and they're also a very uh, nice riding, relatively quiet summer tire. So they give you everything that you would want in a 340 Treadwear tire. Throwing these on here, gotta say it feels pretty good to put a summer tire on. It means we're gonna have uh, lots of extra grip, make even uh, better VTEC noises. And uh, by the way, for those of you who are wondering, this DW here on the tread pattern, the W wears off and that means that your wet performance is no longer optimal and when the D rubs off, it means your dry performance is no longer optimal. So they've even dummy proof these tires for me. Moving on to some cosmetic mods here. We're gonna replace these OE corner lights. Turns out we have a fan in England, Norwich, England, named Neil Taylor, who was kind enough to send us these. He's uh, obviously a, a big EF guy, a big Honda guy. He sent us these as well as some JDM side markers. So uh, thank you, Neil, for that. Super generous of you. And uh, for those of you without giant hordes of Honda parts, if you wanna give us some support, there's always the Patreon option. Just jump on to patreon.com forward slash, uh, forward slash speed academy. In fact, we're having a Patreon party here at the shop. It's too late for you guys to get in on that if you're not already a Patreon supporter, but those that's one of the perks that we give our Patreon supporters. They get to come and have a pizza party, hang out here at the shop, kick all the tires on our project cars. There you have it. Must admit, it does look much cleaner, doesn't it, Pete? It gives so it a, clean, DP. It's, uh, yeah, more to, more to my liking for sure. And as you guys saw at the beginning of this episode, we do have that very cool JDM style front bumper from FF Motion out of California. However, it is off getting painted right now, so instead we're gonna throw the original bumper back on here just to complete the front end and to show you that different lip that we got for it. Bumper in place, and you can see we've gone away from that giant front air dam lip that we had on there before, which was just, it was like what, Pete, 25% too big? It was just it was, a little yes, bulky, yeah. the shape of it. A little flat. Yeah, it wasn't great. I mean, it had a look, but neither of us loved it, so luckily for us, our buddy Richie, who does our body and paint work for us, had an OE SI front lip in his stash of parts. He is a beautiful EF himself, and uh, he painted it and donated it to the project. So thank you, Richie. I know a lot of you will probably be triggered that we painted it white because the front lip was black on this car and you know to match the, this uh, belt line or whatever, but I think painting it white actually works really well because we added that rear lip on the rear bumper, which is about the same height. So I think aesthetically, this actually looks much better. It's a much cleaner look. Out back, a lot of you guys commented that we should put this Kanjo style wing on here that we showed you once before. Uh, we showed it to you before it was painted, I believe. And we did do a quick test fit on it and we just weren't really sold on the look considering we didn't go like full Kanjo racer on this thing. And this is obviously for that, that style of build. Well, it's on there temporarily. We stood back and had a good look at it. And I think we're in agreement, it's just, uh, it's too much wing, DP. It's not the look we're going for. Usually, I don't think you can have too much wang, but in this case, it's just too much wang, everybody. If you look at the front end of the car now, especially with that smaller front lip spoiler, this just overpowers it. It looks imbalanced. Now it's time for the favorite part of every build, and that is sticker tuning. Uh, my buddy CRX Seth, who runs a great YouTube channel restoring uh, CRXs, as his name would imply, happened to have a set of uh, Civic VTEC stickers in his stash and was kind enough to send those up to us. So thank you very much, Seth. And uh, we'll put a link in the description to his YouTube channel if you're uh, an EF guy. He's also got like a mint DC2 type bar. It's got all the good Honda stuff. Sticker tuning complete on the back end here. And uh, gotta say, I'm pretty stoked to have Civic VTEC on there. Just the way Sachiro Honda and Ayrton Senna and God intended. None of this choo-choo stuff, Peter. We've gone VTEC, we've gone for Honda purity on this one. As much as it pains me to remove an Arizona license plate because A, that is a cool looking license plate and B, it 
just tells you where it's from and why it's such a clean, rust-free carb. And in the meantime, we'll make it road legal here in Ontario with a plate and, of course, a Speed Academy license plate frame, which uh, you can get at our shop. So link in the description for that. Now on to the interior where we are saying goodbye to the mile per hour speedometer here and swapping out a whole entire cluster here with kilometers an hour. Uh, thank you to Icon Era Parts, Dylan over there. He just seems to have all of Got all the, things. The, the parts. But DP, look at this. This one says unleaded fuel only. Yeah. And this one, we've got the French on there as well. Oh, wow. Essence sans pombe seulement. I, I, I butchered that, I'm sure, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's close enough, right? But yeah. you can see the clusters are the same. What we would have loved to have here is like a 9K SIR uh, tack, but those are completely different than these. So you, there would be a ton of wiring needed to, to, to make work and especially with the speedometer on those cars as well because it's this one you can see is a cable setup where the SIR one is a digital one. So it would be a nightmare to try to figure that out. So we're just going with this and I think from putting this back in, it's gonna be a plug and play affair. And really what I wanna show you guys here is the whole hood, this is super easy to take the cluster out because the whole hood comes off, which is kind of nice. There's two screws in the back here, two screws here, and then you just pull this whole thing off and it comes out. So uh, I, I love the simplicity of 80s Hondas. And you can see now putting this back together gonna be super easy as well. Quick update, uh, you can see the old tint that came out was very much purple. It kind of reminds me of like uh, Christmas uh, crinkle paper that you put in a bag when you were too lazy to wrap it the old fashioned way. You just put everything in a bag and then jam the stuff on top. And interestingly, the rear glass had a much newer non-purpled tint that came off way cleaner, like it left no glue residue behind. Just a nice minty fresh smell. So uh, the challenge now is the purple stuff left a lot of glue on the inside of the glass. So we're gonna have to get in there with, I guess soapy water and a razor blade. Yeah, that, like... that seems like the, the way to go. There you have it guys, I guess this is the final form of our EF Civic and uh, I should mention that the soapy water and razor blade technique worked extremely well to remove that old glue. Left you with like this ghost buster snot afterwards which was uh, not great but anyway, it cleaned up good and I, I, I just love the way the car looks. It's so clean and simple. I think it's a very like period correct kind of vibe that we've got going on both with this and with the EG frankly. So. Uh, Really happy with the overall effect of it. I think it looks like it's ready to go for a drive. Well, we are in the EF. We are driving. It feels like a fishbowl, DP. It does, yeah. I'm sitting up way high and I'm surrounded in a little bubble of glass and the seating position is not great. I'm not gonna lie, the seat is too high for my taste and yeah. the steering wheel is a little too far away. I had to move the seat forward. I don't have great leg room underneath the steering wheel, but I'm driving an EF with a B16B, so I'm not gonna complain too much. The roads here, as we always say, are atrocious. Oh my God, it's like- It's the time of year where the roads have like heaved all winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about as bad as they get. And uh, again, we'll reiterate just like we did in the EG. It's a Honda, it so a it's going to be tin canny. It is tin canny, yeah. no doubt about it. But it's also got VTEC, which... Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that feels good. It that feels, feels lively. It feels spicy. That I don't does know if it feel feels lively. EG spicy, but let's give it no. a proper rip here. Yeah, see. yeah. You do have to give it some revs with this clutch, I find. Yeah. Bury the needle on the tack here. Okay. It, it's got that hot 
fun to feel. For sure. It goes good. It does go good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it feels like, you know, slightly quicker than a Type R. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, it's got Type R power and it weighs four or 500 pounds less than yeah. a Type R. So yeah. in a straight line, it's gonna beat the Type R in a drag race. But, you know, with the short wheelbase and uh, because it is a lightweight tin can, it doesn't necessarily have the same feel on the road. It doesn't feel as solid and as tied together yeah, as the Type yeah, R does. Yeah. The question for me is how accurate is that tack, DB? Yeah, let's, because let's, 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 let's just bounce the limiter here. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, see, you got like... <laughs> it's fully buried. Oh, my goodness. This thing rips, dude. Oh, yeah. This thing rips. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you have to bury the needle to the point like, where it can't go any further. Yeah, and you didn't even bounce rev limiter. I still didn't hit rev limiter, so it's like, <laughs> what is going on? Oh my goodness. That is hilarious. Oh, that, that is, is gold. Well, it'll look good on camera, guys. We'll have to get you like a tack oh, camera wow. just to see uh, it. It's a little scary. late for that because yeah, we don't have a yeah. GoPro in here. Well, when but, we go uh, to the track, we'll see about yeah, setting it up yeah, so you yeah. can enjoy the needle being buried. But yeah, it's certainly yeah. gone. Yeah, I don't know about hitting the rev limiter because Am I gonna damage anything? I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't know how the tack works. It, that's, it's just so funny to think. Okay. There you go. Man, it's got that, oh, it's got that great power. Oh, we, we got a fire, we got something, a, something, we, got a, we didn't tighten something up. A loose up. nut on our shifter oh, here. Boy. This guy here, yes. I think. Yeah, okay, yeah. well, we'll have to, all right. uh, that's, that's how it always goes. Good. That's what an EF oh, should man. feel like, DP. It, you know what? You know what? It, it it revs so high, it feels like it has much longer legs than the EG. Yes. Like in the EG, you feel like you're running out of gears all the time. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Where in this, it just revs and revs. Yeah. And you feel like you've got so much more usable power band. Yes. Obviously, a lot less torque. Yeah. Yeah. The torque is the huge thing. Like, man. This thing does kind of feel, you know, you're at like 4,000 RPM here. If you even just like lean into it right now, it probably feels good. Yeah, like, like oh. Not a lot happening no, there until you no, get into the tech. No. So, so yeah. yeah, it's certainly, the, the torque is a noticeable thing for sure. So. Yeah. It gives the car a very different character than the EG being that it revs to 9K and has this, you know, very top end biased power band where in the EG you just got power everywhere, yeah, torque yeah, everywhere. Yeah. And it doesn't really, urge you to wind it out so much. That's right. Where with this, you really have to strangle its neck yeah. to yeah. get the full experience. But I mean, that's part of the appeal of these high revving B-series motors is you do have to strangle their neck and it it's exciting to do that. Of course it is. No power steering. No. Man. Oh, I can just do this all day, PT. Yeah. It's so good. And see, the <laughs> suspension is really nice. It is compliant. nice. compliant. Yeah, it is. When the roads are good, are reasonable. Man, Yeah, no, these fast road pros are yeah. really good on, yeah. on on a reasonable road surface. Yeah. But when you get into the potholes and all the garbage we have around here, it gets a little crashy, yeah. and that's really no fault of Annex. That's just, in any car, yeah. it's going to be garbage over those types of roads, so. And I want to make a point that this is the best sounding exhaust system I think I have heard on not just EF, but a Honda. Really? Wow. I think so. It is so tame. Bold words. It is so TV. quiet. It is. Like this thing made uh, you know, whatever, one, 186, 186 yep. on this exhaust. Yep. It's just so quiet. It is. Pee. Yeah, it's not raspy, it's not loud. Like, like listen to it, all you hear is like, oh, just like, like all intake noise, man. Yeah. It's so good. No, it's got a really good balance of intake and exhaust yeah. sound. It's, yeah. it's not it's not an overpowering exhaust by any means. And cruising, there doesn't seem to be any drone. Like, we haven't cruised at highway speeds yet, but overall, no, I think there's, it there's no chance. Really not with those good. resonators and, and the, that, that big muffler, there's, there's just no chance. Test drive complete, and man, what a hoot this thing is to drive, and what a cool little machine it is to look at, too. But we do have one last thing to show you, and that is this FF Motion JDM style front bumper that our buddy Richie just painted for us. So, thank you, Richie, for that. To mount a JDM style bumper like this, you would either need a genuine JDM. Uh, mounting 
bracket. It's not really a rebar anymore. It's just a bracket that holds the bumper up and connects it to the car. We actually borrowed this from Icon Era Parts locally. We do not own this. And that's because this would cost way more money than a little piece of metal like this is worth. All of this JDM front end stuff is very, very expensive and almost impossible to find now, which is why FF Motion is making this bumper and are going to actually make a bracket that would replace this. They don't have one yet, but when they do have one, we are going to install their bumper with their bracket on this car so that we can verify for all of you guys how it fits. I guess the other option would be to like try to hack up a USDM style rebar, which you can see is a massive piece of metal comparatively. But I'm sure with an angle grinder and enough patience, you could probably make it fit or you could fabricate your own. There you have it mocked up quickly. There's no rebar or anything in there. We're just holding it in with a couple of screws on each end to give you an idea of how it looks. And I think it does look really cool to seeing a JDM bumper on what is otherwise a USDM front end. Obviously we are missing the grill and that is something they are working on. I believe they're 3D printing it now. This is like a prototype. This is a, a very early sample of the bumper. And it does seem to either require a JDM filler panel or we could, because this is fiberglass, we could do some body work to make it fit the existing filler, filler panel better. But as it fits right now, it looks like it needs a, uh, a filler panel that sort of bends out more in the middle to, to fit the shape of it. I should also mention these uh, turn signals are their own. So these are reproduction JDM style turn signals. And overall, I think the, the look is really pretty cool. It, oh, it also has an integrated front lip into it. In any case, it opens up a lot of interesting options for you guys out there who want to play around with a JDM look on your USDM uh, EF uh, Civic or CRX uh, without going and spending a million dollars on the genuine JDM stuff. As we wait for that uh, rebar mount and the grill piece from FF Motion so that we can do a final install on their bumper, we've reverted to the USDM one and you know what, it looks pretty great too. I, I, th this car looks good no matter what you do to it and I really don't mind the the bigger, you know, diving board USDM front bumper. And look at this thing in the sun. It is a thing of beauty. I am so pumped on how this car has turned out and I hope you guys are too. Really enjoyed every part of this build. My favorite part so far, ripping tech around here of course, but uh, we've got lots more of that for you in the next episode where this thing is gonna go to the racetrack, face off against Pete's Turbo EG. Who's gonna win everybody? In the roll races, I think we probably know, but uh, in those lead follow chase laps, I don't know, man, this thing might be the might be the winner. And more importantly, which one is gonna steal our hearts the most? Like, which one is gonna be the most fun to drive, the most engaging to drive? Which one do we wanna keep the most? So uh, lots more to look forward to, guys, but thank you so much for watching, and why don't we just leave it with some beauties here for you.